Welcome to Project 308, also welcome to 2023. My name is Lou Tranche, and that right there is my 1978 Ferrari 308 GTS. Oh, I've almost fallen, killing myself, that I'm restoring for you right in front of your eyes when I'm not killing myself. Let's get into it. Since I have your attention right now, all you Ferrari fanatics, I have a question. You see my A-pillar trim right here? It's not all black. And if you look at my roof, it's not all black either. It has that tan uh, stripe in it. But the rest of the car is um, all black. That doesn't strike me as right. It strikes me I have some mismatched panels in there. I mean, it looks okay, but what do you think? Is it the wrong panels? Let me know. Welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here and you've ever thought to yourself, self, what does it take to restore a fine Italian automobile? Well, you're in luck. Starting off with the process of mounting my center console, there's problems here as well. But what isn't on this car? So I've got this unit called a threaded insert also known as a riv nut. I'm gonna show you how it works. Now, step one is to drill a hole that size. I'm gonna thread the insert onto here. Put it in the hole. And I'm trying to do this nice and stable so you can see this. Okay, focus, there we go. You can see right there. That has collapsed there. This is a metric threaded insert here, so six mil by 1.0. We have it instantaneously. We have a, a threaded hole. I'm putting in these threaded inserts simply because the holes that are in the floor, well, somebody has forced a self-tapping screw through it before and the hole is just too damn big. So instead of forcing yet another larger screw into the hole, I'm just gonna fix it with a threaded insert. As I endeavor to get out of the interior, I have to put the gauges back together. Now they've been sitting on my bench right there for quite some time. And uh, I wanna change all the bulbs and reassemble them. One of the pieces was broken. I'm gonna kinda JB weld it back together. Let's take a look at it. Ferrari chat member Plutonium, Plutonium for the win. Thanks for sending me this list of LED replacement balls that has been compiled and is readily available for anyone who dares to do this themselves. But I'm being melodramatic because it actually wasn't that hard. The smaller bulbs, the ones that can go in two different ways, well, you actually have to check to make sure you have them in the correct orientation. Or they won't work. Go figure. And of course you gotta check your tools you're using because every once in a while you get something that's messed up. Like this jumper lead that doesn't work and costs you precious time.
all of these original uh, lamps have been broken and glued back in. The tabs on them, a couple of them are okay, but the rest of them are falling apart. So what I opted to do is I bought this set um, of LED lamps. I'm going to reuse that one, but I've got these four new ones. I know the originals did not have any kind of descriptive image on them, but I don't remember what they are, so I'm going with these because I want to. You know what I have realized? I am special! I'm also yeah. going to bypass this rheostat. This is the dimmer rheostat, uh, as everything is LED now. Um, and apparently these are problematic, so I'm going to make a little thing to bypass that, put these in, and get this done and back in the car. As you can see here, there was a little bolt, a little 4 mil bolt um, spot welded to the piece. And on that side, it has long since broken away. I'm going to try and make something and just kind of JB weld it in there just to hold that uh, piece right there. This 4 mil bolt has a little bit of a rounded head, so I'm going to show it who's boss and take it down a bit. And of course, where would we be in this world without JB Weld? This is the original stuff, the cold stuff. It's better. It's much better. It just takes an incredibly long time to dry. And I suspect that's why they call it the cold stuff, because unlike the other stuff, it doesn't have any active ingredients in it that causes it to heat up as it's drying. That's my theory, anyway. Let me know if I'm correct on that. As I mentioned earlier, I'm just going to bypass this rheostat and see how that works. French fries, thanks. Oh, 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 oh yeah, oh, french fries. Thank you. All right, so I'm still working away on this unit. In addition to this one tab being broken, the other one over here was broken as well. I've had to add a part there. Uh, basically, what these are for, obviously that goes there. These four, one, two, three, four, those are the mounting points. So theoretically, you would pop the little lamp out and then you would, while it's in the car, you would put a bolt through there and that corresponds to a spot in the dashboard to bolt this in. That turns there. And once again, uh, the wiring goes through. It's sitting out front. Put the bolt through and then pop the light back in. I am missing one of these. Um, I've got three. I'm missing one, so I'm going to have to replicate that for that side there.
All right, let's take a look. Well, for a 10 minute part, it's worked out pretty good. I mean, it's not gonna be seen. It's just gotta hold the uh, gauges in behind. So, gonna wait for that to dry tonight, which takes a long time to dry. That one's still drying, that one's still drying. Uh, all goes well tomorrow. We'll drop the wiring back on and uh, drop all that wiring back on and we'll put it back in the car. Okay, I'm just gonna backtrack a bit. I've got to put this piece back into the car and line up these pieces. Hang on, let me get this one gauge out. It'll make more sense in a second. So I don't know the orientation of this here in relationship to where the hole is in the dashboard there. Just kind of assemble this as it is, go to the car, line these up, tighten them up so that once all the gauges and everything are in place, it's a little easier. There, hole, hole, hole. Let's go see if I've got those orientated correctly. Not right there, one there, and then there'll be two up higher, two one right there. And uh, one right there. Oh, the agony of defeat. It's a good, strong, powerful run. Yep, my newly fabricated part and the JB weld that I was so proud of just snapped off. And now I'm gonna drop the wiring back onto the gauges and then try putting it in the car. But I imagine putting it in the car is gonna be a bit of a pain because these holes don't line up great. There's gonna be a lot of fuddling around. Fuddling. Hmm. Fuddling? Fudging. Yeah, I don't know, whatever. You really gotta pay attention to Ferrari wiring because you know what? They use the same connectors. There's one. There's two. I'm not gonna lie to you, as I was really considering dropping the steering column. All right, problems, always problems with this gauge here. The reason I didn't take the faces off originally is because I saw this one had been played with before, and but as I was wiggling it in there, that kind of lens uh, popped off. So I'm gonna have to deal with it after all. I foolishly originally attempted to put the gauge back in the car, even though I saw a tiny blemish on the side of the gauge. It turns out it wasn't a blemish. It was actually split. All right, so while this repaired piece seems to hold no problems, because it's got the extra support of the gauge there, this one, however, was breaking off with that bolt nut assembly. So I scuffed that up and I just glued, the, I JB welded the damn thing right to it. And we'll see if that holds a bit better. All right, so the other gauge was just nagging the crap out of me that it was dirtier than it should have been. I don't know if you can see that. Um, I did manage to get it apart. The other one came apart real easy because it was broken. This one... <laughs> this one almost broke it there. This one was not so easy because it was not broken. And I almost broke the glass, so because I'm talking here and not paying attention to what I'm doing. <laughs> Alright, so that was a massive pain in the butt. But I got it back together. And it's clean now. And yet, another moment of discovery. The plastic mount in the dash, it's not there. It crumbled, it fell away. Well, 
Well, the saga continues to get this gauge cluster in. I'm going to go in there right now and file down that JB Weldon stuff and then drill a hole and maybe I'll get lucky and I will get it in. It's been like the third or fourth try. Every time I put it in, something else goes wrong. And my little JB welded piece right there has popped off several times. Uh, I kind of got mad at it and glued the shit out of it. If this doesn't do it, um, then I'm probably going to have to try and weld something in there, which I don't want to do. But it's ugly this time, but I got a lot on there. Two started. Top two are started. Bottom two now. Here's hoping I don't have to take that gauge cluster out anytime soon. <laughs> what a pain in the arse. <sighs> With my gauges in, I can breathe a sigh of relief and move on to something else now. I did not expect to be spending so much time fiddling with everything, and I mean everything in this interior. Holy finicky. If you watched my previous episodes, you know I have a little bit of experience dealing with vinyl. And I mean a little bit, but I am getting better rapidly. I have to be, because this original stuff, it is gone.
It's one of those things that are hard to see. My spidey senses are telling me that the wiring pass-through holes don't line up between these two parts. So ever since my center console fiasco where I bought the wrong console, I've been very aware that the parts that did not come originally on this car may be wrong. And I know for a fact that these door panels did not come with this car. So the question is, lining this up is an issue. And if I cut that hole wrong, I have essentially ruined this door panel after I had just spent significant dollars to have it reupholstered. So that's why I'm taking my time with it. There's my hole there and there's where my bottom of it is. So I've got to come up higher. If I make that hole there I'm gonna screw myself. Alright so there's a hole in the door. The metal works. I'm just trying to see. Regardless of where anything lines up I've got to have that hole lined up with the metal hole inside. So just turn it here. Okay, let's see right there. Right, there's my finger right there. So that tells me that I'm gonna have to modify the part that comes there. So I'm gonna make my hole there because it does seem to line up with the car and I'm not about to make any more holes in my car. So It's not the door panel. My problem is the. Uh, my problem is not the door panel. It's the other part. Okay. All right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open that up. So that sits like that, and that's too high. So we're just gonna find a way to open that up this way. Interestingly enough, this side seems to line up better. Well, look there, Project 308 is tucked away for another period while I prepare this video for you. Once again, thank you for your support, your likes, your comments, all the help you guys provide. You're awesome. Bye.